Thanks, guys. Just good to have a, a window into what we're doing around our city. And uh, the partnership that we've had with the Abomi is a long-standing one. And uh, for those of you that have been there before, and, and so just looking at those slides, to just see um, how over the years you know, Mark uh, and his team have invested in, in just upgrading that center. Um, and it just looks good. Mark, well done. Um, and not only that, he's upgra- you know, the, the team, the team serving there has, has, um, has been upscaled and just have a greater reach and a greater efficiency. Um, and so just to see a community center like that growing and becoming more effective is just a, a wonderful thing. So just honor you, Mark, for what you do there. And uh, yeah, if you can help, you know, we can't take what God has given us um, in terms of our resources with us one day. What we invest in the kingdom is what counts. Amen? Amen. Right, so, so today we are kind of going to get a little bit more specific in terms of the series that we have been on. Your life counts. If you're visiting with us this morning, uh, just, to, just to fill you in, we're, on this, we're in this series we're doing as a church. But even if you come this morning, you won't miss out completely. But uh, just to just give you a reference that we are uh, on this series. And if you're visiting with us, please uh, join us in the welcome corner for a free cappuccino after the service. We'd love to just meet with you and, and connect with you. But just to remind you that we started off uh, four weeks ago um, looking at Moses. Remember, on the back end of the desert, there was Moses, disillusioned, not fulfilling his calling, and that's where God found him, revealed himself to him and gave him a, a, a call that, that kind of blew Moses' mind to lead his people out of the bondage of Egypt to, to the promised land. And just how God will find us where you are. Where you are, whether you're serving him or not, whether you understand that your life counts or whether you don't, God will find you where you are. And then he's going to build a relationship with you. And the second week we looked at the importance of relationship. That everything that we do for the Lord ultimately flows out of our relationship with him. Our intimacy with him. Otherwise, we're just doing it for ourselves, really. And so, and so the relationship uh, is so important. Then into the third week, we looked at being led by the Spirit. Remember, out of that relationship, the Holy Spirit given to us in the new covenant to dwell within us and to lead us to fulfill the purposes of God in our lives. And so we spent some time in the third week looking at just how the Holy Spirit leads us and our, our need to partner with Him, to be sensitive to Him and to follow His, uh, his promptings. And then uh, last week, we... We looked at being salt and light with the aroma of Christ. We, we carry his presence. And who will forget, um, obviously, making sort of the start of Bultong here um, for us. The importance of salt. You can taste it in your mouth. Well, you got to taste Bultong um, and uh, sweet potato chips for the vegetarians. Uh, but you got to taste what salt does because it's nice and it adds flavor. Imagine Bultong without salt. You can't make without salt, you can't really taste anything without salt. So, um, because we are called, wherever we go, we carry Christ. We don't switch him on and switch him off. We don't go to church and, oh, I'm a Christian and let my light shine. And then I go to work on Monday morning and I close them all up. No, 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 no. We are always, we are always letting his light shine. We are salt and light. And if we don't, then we lose our saltiness. It's, we have no value, really. So we're understanding that our life counts Living with significance means that we need to understand that we carry Jesus wherever we go. Today is where it all gets very, very specific. This is where, this week, we want to to help one another find that thing that God has called us to. That uniqueness in your creation. The thing that God has created you to be and shaped you to be. The video for this morning will, uh, will be uploaded um, it's a little longer, Les, so we're going to upload it on Facebook this week. And so you can watch the video, something of Leslie's testimony and story, um, and would encourage you to do that, uh, just, to, just to see how the Word of God is, is kind of filtered through real stories and real journeys. And so, and so please don't miss it. Uh, it will be uploaded on, on Wednesday. So let's turn in our Bibles to 1, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll follow it on the screen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which is the story of, or the, the teaching that Paul gives on spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Remember, we're zooming in on the specifics. What God has called you to, what God has gifted you in, what God has equipped you for. This is the week. This is the week where, uh, where it kind of gets, gets down to the nitty gritty and the, and the details. And so 1 Corinthians 12, as I think we know, is, 
is this great passage on, on the spiritual gifts in the church. It talks about the body, the body of Christ, and we need each other. And the hand can't, can't say to the foot that you're useless and you're not as valuable as me and, and all these things. I want to zoom in on just the first few verses. In verse 4 of chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. There, now Paul speaks and he says to the Corinthian church, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. And then he goes on to explain. That. I want to just zoom in on those, on those uh, three verses. That's what we're just going to, going to focus on. Because it's actually, it's actually quite simple. It's not rocket science. Probably much of what you, uh, you'll hear today, uh, you've probably heard before. It's not new. It's just a, a reminder and a focus. And the first thing is this. The first thing is that God has given many gifts to his church. Gifts that you and I carry. But they're not limited to gifts as we would understand spiritual gifts. Because in verse 4, it talks about three things. And they're three different words. Gifts, service, and workings. Gifts, service, and workings. The first is gift from the Greek word charis, which is, which is directly translated as grace. So it's a gift of grace that God has given us, that God has given us supernaturally. In other words, it's not, it's not like, oh, yeah, he's, just, he's just born good at maths, or he's just, he's just good. It's not a natural ability. It's a spiritual gift of grace, if that makes sense. You don't deserve it. You didn't earn it. You didn't qualify for it. God just gave it to you. God just gave it to you. And so, and it's a supernatural gift given by the Holy Spirit. Okay? The second word is service. Service. By the same Lord, then there are, there's a ministry of service. The word service is different to gift. It is, it is the word diacono, from which we get the word deacon. One who serves. One who serves. And so, in, in essence, it's just a very practical way of ministry. The same Lord, the same Spirit. So, to some there are gifts, to others there are works of service, and then to others there's a word called working, which is a bit, it's a bit awkward in, in translation, uh, workings. It, it's uh, from the, the Greek word energeo, which is where we get our English word energy from. And so, it's kind of to exert, it's kind of to exert influence, if you like, influence. And so, and so you have these three, these three manifestations of the Holy Spirit, all equal but different, if that makes sense. All equal in the sense that there are manifestations of the Holy Spirit in you, working through you. Some have gifts, there are some works of service, and there are some workings or influence, if you like. Does that make sense? Let's, uh, let's break it down a little bit further. So, when it comes to the gifts, we can see the list that's given at the end of chapter 12. There's a list in uh, Romans 12, uh, and we can identify what the Bible lists as spiritual gifts. So, for example, one of the gifts that, that we know well would be like the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues, that kind of thing. We understand those as spiritual gifts. They're a gift of grace. They're a gift of grace, a supernatural empowering. So you'll hear in Leslie's testimony just, you know, just how, just when you have the gift of prophecy, you'll have revelation that you did not derive in any other way. You didn't read about it, hear about it, you just heard because the Spirit prompted you and, and gave you some insights into a situation. It's a supernatural gift of grace, right? Then when we get to service, what's, what's service? Well, it's serving, but it's a supernatural expression of serving. You know, some people just serve you, and then there are other people that serve you in such a way that you like, you like blessed. Does that make sense? You're just blessed. You're just fine up. There's some people that uh, they just have a, it's a supernatural expression. Anybody can serve, but when you serve in as an expression of the Spirit, the people that are served are just lifted. They are blessed in a way that perhaps other people who are also serving Nothing wrong with their service. Just, just on. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, people that have that have been blessed with a with a, a ministry of the Spirit in serving you in some way. You know because of the way that you feel. 
the way that you are blessed, the way that your spirit is ministered to. You know why? Because they're not just serving in the flesh or in the natural. They're serving, and the Holy Spirit is working through them, touching your life. And then, that of workings. Think influence. Think influence. So, for example, leading worship is not a spiritual gift. I would say it's probably, because these aren't listed, so we're kind of guessing here. But I would say probably leading worship, as our, our worship leaders do, is probably a working. A working of the Holy Spirit through that person to influence us, to move us into the presence of the King. Does that make sense? Okay, worship leading isn't listed as a gift of the Spirit. You won't find it as, a, as a, a, a ministry of service in the Bible. Could it be then that, that ability to influence through music, through music, that ability to influence? It's got nothing to do with their skill. It's got nothing to do with their experience. But something happens because they, it's a ministry of the Spirit through them. Does that make sense? The reason why I think that's important is because if you've journeyed with the Lord for some time, and I remember when, when I was probably in my 20s and so on, um, we regularly had to do like spiritual gifts questionnaires. Uh, find out what your gift is. And then you had to, uh, I don't even know if it really helped me that much, to, to be honest, when I think back. Um, and, and sometimes there's the danger of like categorizing, oh, you're that. Okay, so you're that, you're that. You know, actually, I think the Holy Spirit is so much bigger. In fact, in fact, the fact that you have the Holy Spirit in you means that you could manifest any of the gifts, any of the works of service, any of the workings at any time as the Holy Spirit may need and lead. So, so we don't want to be picked, but we do understand that through your unique creation and God's unique working in you, that there may be a gift or more, a work of service, a working or influence that you have that's good to recognize because then you're able to partner with the Holy Spirit working in you to touch others. Because it goes on to say that they are all expressions, they are all expressions of the same God. Then on to verse 7. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given. So the manifestation is the expression. Better translated would be the expression of the Spirit. So in gifts, in service, and in working, all of those are an expression of the Holy Spirit at work in you and through you. Here's the good news. That is given to each and every single person. Each and every single person. So one of the things for me was um, when, when I was doing spiritual gifts questionnaires back in my 20s or, or, or something, it's always, and, and again, this was just the perspective that was kind of taught to me, that, that you know, they're spiritual gifts and those are spiritual. And then they're like natural abilities. They're like natural. You use them for the law, but they're, they're natural. I don't know if the Bible actually drives a wedge between the two. Because does it not say in James that all good gifts, yeah. everything that we have and every area that we serve God with, whether it be abilities that we're born with, abilities that we grow into, is all actually given by God anyway. Yeah. In fact, I think that's the point that, that Paul is making. It just so happens, though, that when we give our lives to the Lord, those things that God has given us are redeemed for His purposes. And yes, at any time, God may give you others. For example, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. These are things we should long for. If you don't know, if you're, gonna, if you're sitting going, ah, I think, I'm not sure, you know, I used to operate in this, and you're not sure, what I would say, eagerly desire, eagerly desire. Long after. But to each one, at least a gift or a service or a work in his giving. Each one. Because God has uniquely created each of us. With that in mind. He's created you uniquely for his glory, for his purpose. And so the second thing, the first thing is there are gifts, service, and workings. The second point for us to understand today is that it's given for everybody. It's given for everybody. 
And you know what happens sometimes? Because we, we human, we run after the prominence. Oh, I, I want to be a leader. I want to, or I want, I want to prophesy. Or, or We don't have... The very essence of what Paul is saying is we each get something. And the measure before the Lord is not how great your ministry is, how many people you impact. The measure is how faithful you are as a steward to what God is giving you. How faithful you are as a steward. And so it's given for everyone. That's why this week we want to help you. We want to help you find what God has uniquely created you for. Very exciting. And then the third thing, and the third thing, all of this is given, it says in verse 7, all of this is given. God has given all these gifts, these service, and these workings to his church, to every one of you, not for yourself, for the common good, that lives may be touched around you. That lives may be touched around you. It's not given for ourselves. It's not given for ourselves. It's that lives may be touched for the common good, for the blessing of, of those around of giving ourselves, of, uh, ourselves away. It's not for us. It's not for us to go, oh, I got this gift. I oh, God uses me like this. It's not for that. It's not for that. What God gift do you have? I have this. Uh, it's not that. It's actually about giving it away that a hurting, broken, lost world can be touched through the supernatural ministry of the Holy Spirit through your life. Through your life. And that's what leads to significance. This whole series is your life counts. It really does. Your life matters. And it matters because God has given you something. God has put something in you. And He desires you to use that to touch those around you. And when you do that, not only do you, do you come to an understanding that your life actually does count, that your life really matters, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, your life really matters. And that fulfills one of the deepest human needs we all have, which I think God created us for and with, is that need of significance. And what I do in this world really matters. What I do really matters. It might matter for one person, but it really matters. It really matters. And so this week, in your community groups, uh, you, uh, you might have already got it. If you haven't, you'll get it this week. What's your shape? What's your shape? This is not uh, anything that um, we have just adapted it. Uh, this actually comes from Rick Warren Saddleback Church uh, some years ago. Um, and uh, we just adapted it and tweaked it a little bit for our purposes. But it basically is an uh, acronym. Basically an acronym to, to look at five areas that will help you understand how God may have called you and equipped you. The first is from the S would be spiritual gifts. And so at the first part of this, um, of this booklet uh, is just, uh, you can go and have a look and, uh, and they're ba basically just some statements that help you identify what gift you may carry. So for example, you might, you might have words for people um, and you don't, really, um, you don't really know what, what that is. You've just kind of, you know, you just have supernatural insights into situations and, and you're able to solve problems and you know people just say oh you're a good problem solver it could be that you have a supernatural gift of wisdom but you know there are certain gifts that we know well prophecy tongues teaching gifts are easy to identify many of the gifts aren't you might not know that you have a gift so the statement is designed in in our statements that may have happened to you or you've experienced it to help you identify that you may have a gift in that area the second is H. Is H. H stands for heart. Your passion. Your passions. What, what are your passions? And because God has put in your heart passions. Guess what? The person next to you doesn't have the same passions that you have. They don't because God has uniquely made you in that way. In that way. So we look at, at, at people group that you, might be, that, that, that you might be passionate about serving. Passionate about loving. Some people love children. I don't. Uh, <laughs> no, I love children. I love children. I'm just, I'm just not confident like my wife is confident with children. Um, so, so, you know, to the point, 
Uh, I met Kim when she was first year out of school, uh, and I found her, because I was a youth pastor in the church in Cape Town, or student pastor, um, and I found her in, um, in a classroom down the bottom of the passage with a whole bunch of kids all around her, um, climbing all over her, um, and, uh, and, and that kind of thing. And, and as I got to know her a little bit better, she said, well, you know, she was first year out of school there, but she had started helping um, in like the junior children's church when she was like uh, grade 10. And you know that as, as long as you've known Kim, all her life from then, she just loved children. She just loves children. It is her passion. She just loves children. Some of you are in this church because your, your kids met Kim and they loved her and they said, we want to come back to this church. You said, I don't know, the preacher's a bit dodged. But anyway, you came anyway. <laughs> and you know what's happened? So over, over the, the journey of Kim's life, she's got more and more involved. She equipped herself in educate. She became a foundation uh, phase teacher. She taught for a while until Rob Southern had a vision that she needed to come and work here. Um, and um, and uh, she became our part-time children's pastor, uh, I don't know, about uh, seven, eight years ago now. Um, and has grown in that. Um, now she has a, 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 a we've shared she's got a citywide ministry at her own initiative to pull together children's workers from around the city um, she was on a, a, a zoom uh, this, uh, this, this week connected with Pastor Pawan in India where the team have gone because uh, he's desperate for children's ministry and children's resources all of that came out of a passion all she did was just step into her passion and the Lord has just taken the rest just taking the rest. See, sometimes our passion is the key to unlocking what God has in store for you. Just understanding the passion that you have. Under passion, or, or heart, should I say, H will also be causes that you might feel very strongly about. And so if you can identify that, it helps you to be able to understand how God may have uniquely wired you to, to certain ministries and certain things. Then A is for ability. And again, we would often relegate that to, oh, yeah, it's just a, that's just a you know, naturally born ability. That's what, that's what, yeah. Well, if God is Lord of all and he's the, the father of every good gift, then even natural ability is really God-given ability because yeah. he made us. He made us. And so sometimes what we do is we kind of, we kind of toss our, we toss our um, abilities aside and we don't, we don't use them. Imagine if Evie looked in the Bible and said, I don't know if there's art mentioned in the Bible. So you know what I'll do? I'll just paint um, and just be an artist and, and so on. Instead, she understands that art, the God-given ability that she has been given and born with, she can use not only here to paint and, and draw and sketch prophetically, um, but she has blessed many people, many of you with her paintings that she has prayed over and blessed you with and the design and, and so on has come, into, has come into her. Why? She's taking an ability that we could go, oh, yeah, it's just you're born with that. She's taking with that and she's going, no, no, this is from God. And I can use this for God. And this is the way God, by His Holy Spirit, expresses Himself through me. I honestly don't know how maths um, would work in the kingdom, but I'm sure it does. <laughs> I'm sure it does. Uh, every, every thing. To cut the tides. Yes, yes. Anyway, we're so grateful that Audrey is good at maths. Um, and, uh, but the, you see how God can use your abilities. We often just relegate to, ah, oh, it's just, you know, maybe I've just got a flair. Who gave you that flair? And how does God want to use that flair or that knack? P is your personality. P is your personality. You know why? Because God has wired us and made us who we are. Some people are extroverts. Some people are introverts. Some people are task oriented. Some people are more people oriented. And you know what? The kingdom needs all of you. And everyone has a place in the kingdom. Amen. Everyone has a place in the kingdom. Amen. You can be the most reserved, quiet person and still be effective. Some people love crowds. Some people don't. If you love crowds, that's probably where you should be. If you don't, sometimes people are better one-on-one. -on -one. And that's not, a, that's not a gifting thing. That's Maybe it's just your personality. Maybe it's just your personality. 
And in the kingdom, if we were all people oriented, we all love people, we would have a great time singing Kumbaya, but we'd never get anywhere. Because we need task oriented people to get us to the goal. And if we only had task oriented people, we'd never stop for a cup of coffee. Come, 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 we're going. <laughs> so we need both. We need all sorts. And so we'll help you. And it's not a massive big personality thing, but just how you, how you are organized and how you're energized. <coughs> so simple, actually. So it's not meant to be an onerous thing. Please don't think that, oh, no, I'm going to be doing homework all week. You could probably do this in what? Mark 10 minutes? I mean, really, it's not... Well, it's got lots of pages, but anyway, they're not... It's not going to be hard, but it's going to help you identify. It's going to help you identify your personality. And then lastly, experience. Your experience, you know why? Because God, and I think only God, can take the experiences that we've had and transform them for His glory. Now, this is important, because I think some of you need to hear this. Often we feel that those areas that we failed, we've disqualified ourselves. Maybe even those areas where you have deliberately, willfully sinned against God and you're still paying the consequences. God will take anything and everything that you give Him and He will translate that and He will use that for His glory. So sometimes your very experience, what you have gone through, God will use for His glory. That's how Bill Wilson founded AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. He was an alcoholic, found strength, um, and uh, came up with a 10-point program that has become the cornerstone of Alcoholics Anonymous, setting alcoholics free across the world for the better part of a century, almost a century now. Out of his brokenness, out of his struggle, came something that really helped. It really helped so many others. Out of your struggle, out of your pain, and you heard, uh, right at the beginning of the course, you heard faith say, through her divorce and the pain and the brokenness of her divorce came a heart to help others who are going through the same pain. Do you know why? Because faith can relate in a way that I never can because I haven't been through that agony and that pain. But she can relate. And she found God in that brokenness and, and out of that experience is now able to help others. She signs up for... In fact, we have never asked Faith to, to do divorce care except the first time. She comes every time. Trev, ready to run divorce care again. You know why? Because she's come to understand that out of her brokenness and pain, God is using her to minister to others. Never, never, never make the excuse that God can't use you because of what you've done or so on. Whatever you bring to God, He uses and you know why? Because when you have overcome and you have found God's healing and God's restoration in that area, not perfectly, not like you have to reach out, but if you, have, if you have just seen God work in your life and heal and redeem, then you have authority in that area. Not only understanding, but you carry the authority because you know like you know, if God could deliver you, he could deliver somebody else. If God can restore you, he can restore somebody else. Only God does that. So, this week, I uh, really want to encourage you. If you're not in community group, we even have some extra printed. Um, if you don't want to miss out and you still want to, we really encourage you to, to do that. So there are some in that um, uh, beautifully colored box over there. Um, take it, work it through, uh, and we're going to ask you to, in your community, well, on your own, just to, just to work it through and then um, in community time this week to be able to share a little bit. And hopefully out of that, um, to, to channel that back to to mark and, and so on so we can help we can help then um, steer you into different ministries or areas of opportunity or so on that you may be interested nobody's going to be forced into anything but sometimes you just need then the first step is identifying then what do we do next and so we want to help you just take that next step to be able to to be involved that your life may count your life does count some of you don't just yet know it or know it fully and so that's why we're doing um, all, all that we do. So we'll ask the music team to come.